Hello, I'm Giles Whitehead, and today we're going to go time traveling to Bliss Hill, Victorian town in Shropshire. Here you can live a day in Victorian times in a fun way. Unless, of course, you go to the schoolhouse and get told off for drawing foliage on the Iron Bridge or writing with your left hand. There's lots going on today. There's iron casting at the foundry. There's singing at the new inn. There's candle making at the chandlers. Violins and violin playing at the carpenter's workshop. The fairground is open and the Trevithic engine has got steam up. Here we are at the chemist. What an amazing display of jars and bottles of patent cures, dressings and pink pills for pale people. Ah, can you smell that? The vivid aroma of carbolic soap. And there's Constable Jarrett, keeping an eye on everything. He's outside the grocers. Inside it's fascinating to look at the products and packaging on the shelves and hearing about how life used to be for shoppers. You, you bought daily, there was no refrigeration, so your dairy products you bought daily or every other day, um, and you ordered them, fresh meat was ordered if you could afford it. But this is where the smaller quantities were made. If you wanted two inches of tea, I would sell you two inches of tea. If you couldn't afford a packet of biscuits, I'd open a packet and sell you three or four, because I made more money doing that. Okay, I'll just show you very quickly how to make a bag. Children were used for this sort of job. So if I got an assistant working for me, and she got a child over the age of five, I'd quite willingly um, offer her three bob a week. That's 15 pence in your language for the week's work. Um, for the use of her child to do menial tasks like making bags, sweeping up the floor, grinding it. See that big red wheel out there? That's where we would grind up old dried fruit that we couldn't sell. Stick it in there, let it dry, go even hard, and crush it up, sell it to the, to the cake makers for dried fruit. We didn't waste anything. So we'd use children, small bag, medium bag, large bag. Small piece of paper for a small bag. We'd pop the paper around two sides, like so. We've got our very tacky gum from a latex tree and then steamed, so it becomes very, very sticky. And you then have a hole in the cork, that's permanently upside down. Bob that along there, it's a bit like a modern prick stick really. So you'd hold that in place with your fingers, which would dry very, very quickly while you fold the two ends in. And then I'll put some more gum there before I bring that bottom flap over. Let's stick it back in there just to dry off a bit while I'm weighing out your tea or your sugar or your flour. And once that's done, we pull the centrepiece out. You've got a nice tidy bag. We fill your product in there. Pinch the two sides together. Fold the top over. And there's your bag with your product in and a coupon to bring you back. Early form of loyalty card. Before plastic was invented, obviously. So there we go. And that was really what this counter and shops like this were about. Mrs. Jones wasn't back within a week because she's got two boyfriends and an husband on the go and a lot of children so I knew she'd drink a, she'd have a lot of tea. Couldn't afford to buy it in large quantities. She went back within a week. I'd be worried because this was my community and I knew everybody. So on my way home I might pop in see Mrs. Jones to make sure whether she was still alive. People died young then. And if you didn't know, Bliss Hill is an open air museum built on a former industrial area located in Maidley, near Ironbridge. The area's original buildings are brick and tile works, blast furnaces, and coal, iron, and clay mines. Since the museum opened in 1973, it has had further buildings added some original Victorian, relocated and rebuilt, and some here replica buildings. Uh, but it'll, it'll go black because the temperature of the iron that we're pouring into the sand mould is that hot, it's bur it burns it. And we can't use the mould again, but we can use the sand that's in the mould again and again and again. And it's, um, it's held together because it's got, you're in a green sand foundry. It's held together predominantly with water, like a sand castle. There's casting going on at the foundry today. The malt iron is being poured into the sand moulds. There's lots of preparation before this can happen though. 
tamping down and pressing in the shapes of door stops, house signs and bottle openers into the boxes of black sand. The foundry isn't always casting, so we're lucky to be here on a day when it is. It really is a spectacle like firework night with sparks flying and very exciting to watch. There's lots of machines like the steam hammer that I've not seen running in real life, but this is incredible bone shaking immersive experience as you come in. Better. This is the plasterers. It's an Aladdin's cave of plaster ornament and decoration. And here you can find out the secret of avoiding air bubbles in your plaster. This is the Chandler's where candles are being made, being dipped and rotated. 15 hours a day, six days a week. And they don't use tallow anymore, so the smell of that warm wax is quite nice. If we dip those again while they're still warm, we'll melt that layer back off. So because of that, they go back onto the wheel. <laughs> after, after you qualified, I'd have to pay you. I don't want to pay you. There's the tinsmiths where you can get a cookie cutter in all sorts of different shapes. And here's the drapers. There's such a colourful array of ribbons and the hats. I do like a hat. <laughs> Ah, so that's what those are for. Yeah. 
This is the carpenter's workshop where you can see rocking horses being carved and today it's a man making violins. <laughs> Victorian England was full of printed advertising and ephemera and here's where it all gets printed. This lady is using a cropper printing press and she'll be happy to tell you the true meaning of coming a cropper or coining a phrase. These are original blast furnaces that ran from 1832 to 1911 producing pig iron. Why is it called pig iron? Well, it's because of the branching structure formed in sand moulds where the iron would run down channels to form the ingots, resembling the litter of piglets being nursed by a sow. Okay, so you need to thank your lucky stars that you live in today's age and not back then. The New Inn Public House was originally located in Walsall. It was rebuilt and opened here in 1982 and it's an absolute treat to join the sing-song with Guy Rowland. We've seen the big horse, what that song was written for. So here it is, the big horse song and there's the big horse it was written for. If you know him, feel free to join in. Now that is poetry in motion, a replica of the 1802 Trevithick steam engine. The original locomotive was the world's first steam locomotive on rails, commissioned by the nearby Colebrookdale Company. And behind you can see the Maisley Brickworks, one of the original features of this site. Sort of skeleton engine. You can see all of its insides. Just don't wear a scarf when you're in the driving seat. 
Another beautiful machine is the carousel at the Bliss Hill Fairground. The first steam-powered mechanical roundabout was invented by Thomas Bradshaw in 1861. But this isn't that one. Now it's time for our journey to end. Well, I hope you enjoyed travelling back in time with me to Bliss Hill, Victorian Town. Although maybe there's just enough time for a bag of chips from the fish and chip shop. Although we might have to join the queue after the duck. <laughs>